Dear brothers and sisters, Ari Greenwald here. I'm an emergency physician working on the front lines of what uh, appears to be the beginning of the tsunami that is coming at all of us, Jews and non-Jews alike, on the front lines, seeing this COVID virus begin to hit us. I've worked two overnight shifts in the last two days starting admitting patients, starting seeing patients, uh, presenting with this disease and the spectrum of this disease. And I can tell you that this disease, this virus is so much smarter than all of us, so much smarter than all of us. There's been a lot of talk over the last few days and concerns about pointing fingers and whose fault this is and how could this all be happening and we're all feeling a great deal of misinformation and disinformation and not knowing what is right and what is wrong and relying on various sources of information to support our decisions and positions and I'm just as guilty as this as everybody else. We've all made mistakes here and it's not because we're trying to do wrong. It's because we know so little all of us know so little about the reality of what is happening right now. I want to share with you the reality as I see it, the little bit of the reality that I see that I know that I've learned. I've learned that this virus is being spread amongst people who are completely asymptomatic. I've learned that this virus is presenting in the emergency department with people who don't have cough, don't have shortness of breath, and don't have fever. They have muscle aches and pains, or diarrhea, or a sore throat. And I've learned as well that our healthcare system, not to any fault of their own, has been applying a testing algorithm, which is missing the majority of the cases that are out there circling in our Jewish community and beyond the Jewish community and all over the world without anybody knowing. We've been relying on statistics of numbers of cases that are prevalence of disease, how many people are getting sick with this virus, and we're being falsely reassured by how steep that number, is rise, uh, that number is rising and getting very concerned when that number suddenly spikes. Our testing that we have had in place over the last month or more across Canada, across the United States and everywhere has been relying on travel history and symptoms of cough and shortness of breath and fever and known contacts, and we have completely missed all the virus and all the people that are carrying the virus without us even knowing it. And as a result, as a result of this, we are seeing in the emergency department on the front lines right now, people who are presenting with symptoms, clear symptoms, who have contacts that they got it from clearly, who also would not have tested positive for any screening tool. And these people are probably contacts of other people. It has been circulating in our community and across the world without anybody knowing it. So we cannot rely on data. And the problem with the data that is coming forth is that our policymakers, our government officials, our public health officials are all relying on data and making decisions based on what we should or shouldn't be doing based on what they think is the actual number of cases out there. And the reality is that the number of cases out there in the community from what I'm seeing on the front lines over the last two to three days is at least 10 times higher than the numbers you're seeing published, if not more. And what does this mean? That means that at current time, we all must be operating and assuming that any one of us is either a carrier and shedding the virus to others or susceptible to getting the virus from anybody else that we see or interact with, any surface that we touch. It has been spreading throughout the world and throughout our community specifically like wildfire and we don't even know it and in two weeks from now we're going to realize how much it's been spreading because all of a sudden this huge tsunami wave is going to hit the healthcare system and it's going to be completely overwhelmed completely overwhelmed and when that happens we're going to have to be making decisions about who gets a respirator and who gets offered hospitalizations and it's going to be much worse than what we're seeing happening anywhere else in the world right now and the united states is going to have it even worse and we're already seeing the beginning of that right now from the frontline workers. And so I urge, I plead, I beg with every one of you who are listening to this message with all of my heart that you immediately, immediately begin to radically self-isolate. This means that you lock up yourself and your family 
in your home and you do not leave for any reason whatsoever. It doesn't matter, matter if you have symptoms or you don't have symptoms. If you're in contact with somebody or you weren't in contact with it makes no difference. It is everywhere. We may be all shedding it. We may be all carrying it. We may be all exposed to it everywhere we go right now. And unless we all do this immediately for at least 14 days, at least 14 days, we will not have any idea of what is actually really happening out there. That is number one. And it must be done across the board. Any non-essential travel outside of your home and interaction with anybody, it doesn't matter about social distancing. Any interaction with anybody outside of your immediate family and immediate home right now should be immediately stopped. Immediately stopped. And number two, if there are people who are over the age of 65 or have significant medical conditions, immune compromised state, you must... Be extra, extra vigilant. That means that you don't go out shopping. You have somebody drop off food outside of your door. You do not visit with your grandchildren. You do not do anything that possibly makes you susceptible to any exposure that you have not already been exposed to. Because it might not be until 14 days that we're all at home that we realize any exposures that we've had. Because it can take up to 14 days for us to become symptomatic from this disease. And so unless I I beg of you to do this, because I know that unless we start to enact this across the board, and especially within the Jewish community, which has such close ties and relies so much on physical connection, unless we begin to radically separate and self-isolate, I fear that this is going to continue to spread. And we're going to see the repercussions of this. And we're going to be dealing with very difficult decisions and having funerals in the next two to four weeks because of the decisions we make today. And I beg of you to take every action possible to not make that a reality. The second thing we have to do is we have to come together. We have to realize that we're all in this together. It's not nobody's fault. We're all making mistakes and we're all doing our best. And we, the, the, the sooner we realize that our strength comes, number one, in recognizing that we're all sharing the same degree of, of concern and experiencing the same amount of, 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 of frustration and, and, and the same amount of, of vulnerability and emotional ability. We are all in this together. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter who we are. And we have to start coming together and find ways to come together because together we can beat this virus. We can beat this virus if we come together. But we must come together. And we must start going on the offensive. We must start attacking this virus. We cannot continue to sit back and allow it to attack us when we don't even realize we're under attack. We can't go on the defensive. We have to go on the offensive. And the only way that we currently know to go on the offensive against the virus is to begin taking radical steps, radical, difficult, difficult steps that are absolutely necessary immediately. Not tomorrow, today, right this very moment. Everybody should lock up their family in their home, not go out for anything, anything non-essential, and especially, especially anybody who is at increased risk should not go out for any reason whatsoever, unless you need to seek emergency medical attention. And then you call 911. This must be done immediately. I beg and I pray for each and every one of us. And I look forward to the greatness that we can achieve together in coming together and finding ways to continue to feel a sense of togetherness and community despite our physical distancing. Physical distancing does not mean social separation, social isolation. We can continue to be a community and socially connected in, in strong, very strong ways for very good reasons, for very meaningful and lofty purposes. And at the same time, maintain this very essential physical distancing. I wish us all, I wish us all health and success in in following these very difficult, very difficult restraints. And I pray that in two to four weeks from now, we can look back on this time and, and know that we made the right decision.